Hey guys, I'm Max and welcome back to Hotlands. We're in downtown Seattle to pay a visit to Nesbitt's Fine Watch Services. Nesbitt's have been around for over a century and are the premier watchmakers in this area. Today I'm going to sit down with Tom Nesbitt and pick his brain about some watch questions that I and I'm sure some of you have had as watch collectors. Well, I'm Jan Nesbitt, co-owner of Nesbitt's Fine Watch Service. Uh, I'm Tom Nesbitt, uh, co-owner of Nesbitt's Fine Watch Service, along with my wife. i um, been a watchmaker for 40 years. Uh, my grandfather basically worked his way from Pennsylvania to New York, uh, trading sleep and board, uh, fixing clocks, uh, until he settled in Harvey, North Dakota. He then became the town's watchmaker, optician, and bicycle repairman. I still like being able to take a item made up of hundreds of components and disassemble it, reassemble it, and make it work. There is a certain satisfaction that is derived from being able to put such a small assembly of parts back together and make it function. Yeah, I mean, it's in the blood. Um, I've always been mechanically inclined. You know, watches were a natural uh, development. You want to start out at one of the colleges that are run in the United States, or if you have the opportunity to go to Woe Step in Switzerland. Most courses are a two-year course. Uh, some of the factories do offer a training program as well. Uh, Rolex has Lidditz, uh, Swatch Group slash Omega has Miami, and Richemont has Dallas, Texas. Well, one of the main reasons you should follow close to the service intervals um, is the gaskets. Gaskets are only viable for X number of years. The other issue is the uh, synthetic oils that they use in watches today. Once that synthetic oil dissipates, you've got a ruby jewel or a ceramic bearing working against a um, steel or coated pivot, you'll, you'll wear the pivot out. There's going to be uh, extra expense involved in servicing the watch. As watches progress, as watches improve, uh, newer metals are used, newer bearing surfaces are used, uh, gaskets improve. Now the service intervals can be anywhere from seven to ten years. No. <laughs> Simple answer. Um, you must have a steady hand and a good eye and a lot of patience. Well, just to give you an example, my father suffers from uh, a very shaky left hand and he's left-handed. He actually went through a surgery to implant a device in his head that would prevent the shakes. Now, my dad actually developed that issue early, well, in his mid-50s, and it um, just progressed over the years, and now he's 87. He had the surgery two years ago, um, and it, it was night and day. Anything um, prior to the caliber 30, 35, when they went to a five-digit case number, has been discontinued by Rolex. They simply could not uh, supply material for a watch that hasn't been made since 1979 or earlier for some of the ladies calibers. Um, 
for any company to be able to supply a full range of parts for a product that is 50 years old is virtually unheard of. And the watch industry is no different. There are people that did hoard material uh, when they heard the rumors. Uh, Rolex does have a heritage division where they will repair the older watches. I don't actually believe in watch winders. Um, you're, you're putting excessive wear on the automatic system. The oils are going to dissipate in a watch during its service interval whether the watch is worn or not. And with the synthetic oils of today, the oil is not going to congeal or uh, thicken by not wearing it. The only time I would recommend a automatic winder is in the event of a perpetual calendar that is very difficult to reset. The concept behind the coaxial watch was that with a standard Swiss pallet fork watch, you start out with a very high amplitude on a fresh service. So you get the amplitude up to around 300 degrees in the horizontals, 250 or better in the verticals. And as time went on and as the oils dried up, your amplitude would drop off and eventually the watch would not function as designed because now the amplitude is below the 200 degree range. With the coaxial system, you would start out with a high amplitude and as the oils dried up, the amplitude would remain the same and eventually the watch would simply just stop without excessive wear on the movement and it was time to have it serviced. Well, first thing you have to understand is there's a lot more expense in the material. You have pushers, um, you may have extra chronograph components when you're speaking of the price difference between a chronograph and a standard mechanical freehand watch. Second is the fact that there are a lot more components in a chronograph and so naturally it takes longer to service it, um, sometimes as much as 50% more. Um, there's a lot more adjustments, a lot more checking. There's going to be additional time and expense on a chronograph. Uh, check their credentials. Um, check their reviews. Check with AWCI, the American Watchmakers Clockmakers Institute, to see if they're a member and find out if they are a certified watchmaker. Ask their friends, have they ever used this repair facility? Ask the internet. <laughs>